Alright, so for the last module of our Switch presentation, we're going to go over Switch configuration. Um, this is going to touch on some stuff in the last module, so Module 2 with related to uh, VLANs and VCP, and then we'll also touch on Spanning Tree, which we covered in this module. So the first thing we'll discuss is basic interface configuration. You can configure a speed or duplex. Uh, the individual settings are listed there. Um, you can configure a, an IP address on an interface. Normally on switches, this is done on a VLAN. We'll be talking more IP, about IP addresses in the next section. You can confi also configure uh, the switch to get its IP address from a DHCP server with the command IP address DHCP. You could specify a default gateway on the switch. This is where the switch will send traffic destined to an unknown uh, IP address for a LAN that it doesn't know about. You can also uh, enable or disable individual interfaces or entire VLANs with the shutdown command, uh, for short, shut or no shut. You can also add port descriptions. This is very handy for administrators who want to determine possibly the role of a port or who's connected or something like that. You can configure interface ranges. Um, it just makes the configuration a little bit faster. And the whole point of interface ranges is to apply the same configuration to multiple ports at once. And basically, it saves you a lot of time. For example, if you have a number of end users, you may want to configure a port fast on all of those. Now we move to VLAN configuration. This is the sort of configuration you would apply to an individual VLAN. Um, within the iOS, Cisco VLANs are considered individual virtual interfaces. In other words, you can assign an IP address to them, you can configure them separately. And basically, what you do is you assign ports to a particular VLAN, or you can make a port a trunk so that it passes all VLANs. VLAN 1 is considered the native VLAN, and what that means, um, VLAN 1 is applied to all interfaces by default, uh, untagged, and it is untagged on trunk ports as well. So here's an example interface uh, or uh, VLAN configuration. We apply an IP address and issue the no shutdown command to bring the VLAN up. Um, and there we've actually added fast ethernet 0 slash 0 to VLAN 1. So what this these commands do is they basically place uh, fast ethernet 0 slash 0 in VLAN 1. Um, down below that we have a trunk port. Um, this trunk has been configured with dot one q encapsulation. In newer switches you may not even have to specify the encapsulation type um, because inner switch link encapsulation, ISL encapsulation, is actually legacy now. Trunk negotiation. Um, this is one of the more interesting features in Cisco IOS. There are a number of different ways that uh, trunks can be negotiated, not just statically set. So you probably saw on the previous slide the different switch port mode commands. This is the full listing of possible mode commands. We have switch port mode access, switch port mode trunk, and then switch port mode dynamic auto and dynamic desirable. Um, access obviously permits access to a particular VLAN. Trunk trunks all VLANs using the specified method of tagging, either .1Q or on older switches, ISL. Dynamic auto will become a trunk if the other side begins negotiation, so it will try to become a trunk, but if possible, uh, if it, that's not possible, it will default to an access mode. Dynamic desirable will actually attempt to initiate negotiation, um, so if you want to make sure that uh, you have a trunk port on two dynamic ports, you'll make sure, want to make sure that at least one side is configured as desirable. For example, if you were to have both sides configured with dynamic auto, what would happen is the negotiation would not take place and uh, both ports would default to being access ports. You can also specify switch port no negotiate, which will completely disable the trunk negotiation process. Port security, uh, this is one of those interesting things where we're talking about uh, remembering individual MAC addresses on interfaces. So switch port port security, uh, the switch port port security command without any sort of optional parameters uh, will basically say that we want to permit a single MAC address on a port. You can optionally specify a maximum of X MAC addresses in this example. Um, we can also specify what particular MAC address we want, or we can use the sticky option to have it learn the MAC address. Basically, it'll look at the first frame that it receives. The source MAC address will be, be the MAC address it learns. You can also specify what happens if a frame is received that violates the port security that you've configured. Um, so you can say protect, which basically just drops the frame, restrict, which drops the frame and actually logs it, or you can say shut down, which disables the port completely. So this is a quick example of an access port. You can see that this port has access to VLAN 1. Uh, switch port voice VLAN is an optional parameter that you can configure to allow Cisco IP phones to access a voice VLAN. Basically, it makes it act like a trunk and uh, tags that VLAN. Switch, this particular port is in switch port mode access, which makes sense. We want this to be an access port. You'll notice I've also applied port fast and BPDU guard, because if this is an access port, we shouldn't be connecting it to any other switches. In this particular example, I've also applied port security with a maximum of three and violation restrict. So in this case, we're going to have a maximum of three MAC addresses. Um, my reasoning for picking three in this case was because 
uh, they'll have one computer on VLAN 1, and you'll have an IP phone, which gets an address on VLAN 1 and VLAN 100. That's a total of two for the IP phone and one for the desktop for a total of three. So here are some examples of uh, different trunk ports and dynamic trunk ports. So the top one here is a trunk port. We've specified the encapsulation method and switch port mode trunk. I've also given a command here which basically specifies what VLANs are allowed over that particular port. You can actually list VLANs or give ranges. And this would be a dynamic desirable port. Uh, and I've placed this port in voice VLAN 100 uh, just to make sure that if it does come up as an access port, it will allow that voice VLAN. So now we can talk about VTP configuration. Uh, you can set the VTP mode with the command VTP server or a VTP client or a VTP transparent. By default, VTP runs in transparent mode, basically just passing VTP changes through the topology as if the switch is not participating in VTP. You can specify a particular VTP domain, whatever domain your, your uh, VTP group belongs to, You'll, in this case training. Uh, you can optionally specify a VTP password. Uh, this is recommended if you're implementing VTP in an insecure network. And then you can specify the VTP, VTP version if you'd like. You can also optionally prune VTP on a particular interface. For example, if you want to make sure that VTP does not send information about a particular VLAN to switches downlink, you can say switch port trunk pruning VLAN 99. And that will prevent VTP from sending information about VLAN 99 on interface fast, eth fast Ethernet 0 slash 0. Now we're going to look at some global spanning tree commands you can implement. Uh, the first one is spanning tree mode. Um, spanning tree mode determines what type of spanning tree is running. Um, MST we discussed briefly. Uh, rapid PVST and PVST you should be familiar with uh, from the previous presentation. That'd be rapid per VLAN spanning tree and per VLAN spanning tree. The default I believe is per VLAN spanning tree. Um, spanning tree VLAN priority uh, you can specify for each individual VLAN because Cisco switches do per VLAN spanning tree. Uh, you can specify the uh, spanning tree priority for an individual device. Or, if you want to, you can actually configure it to some default values for priority. You can say spanning tree VLAN ID, root, primary, or secondary, and it will set the uh, values to some default values that work very well. On an SDP interface, you can actually change, or on a uh, particular fast Ethernet interface, you can change the spanning tree cost with a spanning tree VLAN X cost and then the cost number. Um, so you can actually tune spanning tree cost per VLAN, um, and this has some interesting implications. You could do some sort of load balancing. Configuring Ether channels is actually pretty straightforward. Um, basically, you add the interface to a channel group, and you can specify a mode on in that channel group. That channel group uh, actually is just a virtual interface, um, and all ports in an Ether channel need to have the same configuration. So here's an example, channel group X, mode, and then you could specify on, auto, or desirable. Um, on just forces the channel group up as long as all ports are up. Auto and desirable both work the same way that they work for trunks, so auto will not initiate negotiation, desirable will. Um, there are some informational commands that you should probably be aware of. Um, these are commands you can just run in enable mode. Uh, these are very useful for troubleshooting the different uh, commands that we just discussed. Uh, show interfaces is a very common one that you'll see. Uh, and for short, show interfaces status. Um, this will just show some brief uh, information, status information uh, for the entire switch. Uh, so show VTP status will show you the VTP information. Show spanning tree, uh, it's not uh, the complete command for spanning tree, I don't believe. There are lots of different uh, show spanning tree uh, commands that you can type. I'd suggest you go in and look at question mark with that. Show ether channel, useful if you have an ether channel configured. Show port security, very nice to see what violations have occurred or if port security is being applied. And then show MAC address table, which I believe we've discussed before. You can optionally specify an interface if you're interested in what MAC addresses are connected to that interface. Show CDP neighbors is nice if you're connecting multiple Cisco devices. Um, any device running Cisco Discovery Protocol will be displayed in Show CDP neighbors. Uh, show CDP neighbors detail will give more detailed information about those. That's just about wraps it up for our third module. So we're done with switching. Next time we're going to move on to IP routing. Again, if you have any questions or comments about this video, please uh, leave me some feedback, and I look forward to seeing you guys next time.